Hi guys, I wanted to shoot a quick video talking about Tattoo Machine Stroke. Uh, this is pretty general information, but uh, uh, hopefully I can uh, give you some information that uh, maybe you, you didn't know or uh, haven't learned previous. We're going to talk about tattoo length, stroke length, uh, uh, short stroke as opposed to long stroke, and we're going to talk about force. Generally, those are the things that we think about when we talk about a, a tattoo machine stroke. Does it hit hard? Does it hit soft? Uh, does it have a long stroke or a short stroke? So I took a little bit of time to make up these uh, terrible little graphs uh, to show um, the, the difference between a, a long stroke and a short stroke uh, machine. So. You can see here, this is uh, an example of a long stroke machine where the path of this needle is uh, is going a greater distance as opposed to a short stroke machine. These are the same time intervals. So the machine is moving, uh, it's spinning at the same speed, but that needle is uh, moving a greater distance on a long stroke machine as opposed to a short stroke machine. So you can see on a short stroke machine that that needle travel is a lot shorter. So because of that, because the long stroke machine is, uh, the needles are moving a greater distance, the needles on a long stroke machine are moving at a faster rate. So they have more force. So as they hit the skin, they have more force. Um, those are great for uh, lining because uh, it's kind of the, the example I use is a straw getting punctured into a juice box. You kind of need that force. You can't just ease it in. Um, it's much easier to just pop it in. So here's a here's a graph showing the difference. So um, on on the long stroke machine, there's more force because that needle is moving faster, uh, and and on a shader, there's there's less force. So. Uh, we generally use a long stroke machine for lining and a short stroke machine for shading. Um, why do we use a short stroke machine for shading? Well, it's not because it doesn't hit the skin as hard. It's because that stroke is actually symmetrical. So those needles are coming down as fast as they're, or they're coming back as fast as they're coming uh, down. Uh, that's... That's the case in almost 99% of the tattoo machines on the market. It's it's a symmetrical, non-dynamic stroke. So, what you tend to see in those uh, in those machines is the sorry, I have no organization right now. Uh, what you see is that needle coming down, and it's coming back in the same needle path as it's coming down. Uh, why? The reason why we use a short stroke machine is a, uh, for shading as opposed to a long stroke machine isn't because it comes down slower, but it, it's because it comes back slower. Uh, it's important to understand what that uh, that stroke or what that tattoo machine is, uh, is what its purpose is. And the purpose is to deposit ink as efficiently as possible. And the best way to do that is to puncture the skin, open that cavity up behind the, the needles to allow that ink to be pulled in. That's going to give you the least amount of holes and the maximum amount of saturation. That's gonna give you ridiculously bright tattoos. It's gonna give you line work that goes in easy, quick. It heals and it's not shiny, it's not raised. Um, uh, shading that's not milky when it's when it's healed um and uh it, just incredibly quick healing tattoos as well so the like i said the 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 needle path is is symmetrical uh so what what we tend to do is uh find the machine that uh is kind of in the goldilocks area so is it is that needle velocity fast enough to puncture the skin with enough force uh, without being so without uh, recoiling from the skin and uh, going back so fast that we can't shade with it 
because if it goes back too fast and there's no hang time, then we're not creating that cavity to, for that ink to get pulled into. Uh, we're, we end up poking a lot of holes with not a lot of ink and it's, uh, it's, it's not efficient. Uh, you get a lot of trauma, long heel times. So, um, so we tend to look for that kind of middle ground where um, it's not it's not really the best tool for lining and it's not really the best tool for shading, but uh, but we can do both and it's a it's a useful tool. So that is the majority of machines on the market. Uh, they they have a stroke just like that and we're just kind of uh, playing Goldilocks with it. So that would be what I would call a non-dynamic tattoo stroke. Um, let's get into what a dynamic tattoo stroke is. And a dynamic tattoo stroke is nothing new. Um, it's been around uh, for since since coil machines, sort of tattoo machine strokes, because it comes down with force, it ends in an impact, and it comes back unassisted. So it comes back slower than it comes down. On a rotary, what we see is a stroke that comes down and on a quarter of the stroke, a, a quarter on the top and a quarter on the bottom, what that is doing, what that needle is doing is it's slowing down to reverse directions. What that tends to do is it wants to push the skin away on the tip of the needle uh, because you don't have the same needle velocity here as you do here. So one way to do that, to, to make that more efficient for tattooing, is to eliminate that completely. So, so to, to design a machine and a mechanism to eliminate the tips of that stroke completely. And beyond that, how do we, how do we sharpen that peak and get that uh, get that backstroke to slow down. So again, there's there's mechanisms like uh, like on the steel driver, uh, coil machines do this. Um, the uh, Cuban sidewinder does this, where it, it comes down and eliminates the tip, where the needles end as fast as they're going. They end and then reverse direction, and then they come back slower than they came down. That is a dynamic tattoo stroke. That is the gold standard in uh, tattoo strokes because it's a it's a nuanced uh, thing for a nuanced task. It's it's not as easy as just making a needle go up and down. It's a lot more difficult than that. So you need a tool that's suited for that job. It's designed specifically for that job. So this this is what I call a dynamic tattoo stroke. It comes back in a different path than it comes down and it ends in terminal velocity. So it snaps down and it reverses direction. So you're not dealing with any of that uh, tip of the needle, uh, wanting to push the skin away. It's easy to penetrate the skin and, uh, and get ink in because that's exactly what it's designed to do. Poke less holes, deposit more ink. And once you learn how to poke less holes and deposit more ink with each impact, then you can manipulate that and modify that to do soft fades out, to uh, do any other technique you want to do. But as soon as you get that down, um, everything else just becomes way easier. Uh, and and it, it's easier to just uh, do what you want in a tattoo, you know, like uh, just visualize it uh, all the way through and know that you have the skill to pull it off, whatever, you, whatever, uh, whatever you want to do in that piece. So, um, I, hopefully that, that sheds some light on things. I feel like, uh, typically when we talk about, uh, tattoo machine stroke, we, um, we, we forget all about the backstroke. The backstroke is so important. Um, so, is a, is a general rule, the downstroke for lining, the backstroke for shading. That's, those, those two are the, the most important things, but if you have a backstroke that is too fast for lining, you're still gonna have issues. So 
So the downstroke and the backstroke are both equally important and, uh, and, and makes, a, makes a huge difference in actually applying a tattoo. Um, hopefully it helps. If you're having issues with, uh, you know, color that's healed milky or line work that's shiny, it's, it's probably, it's probably just frustration with the tools that you're using. It's, it's, it's using a tool that's probably not suited for the task that you're using it for. So, um, so yeah, hopefully, hopefully this helps. Thanks for watching.